Thanks very much, Bob. It's great to see you. It's great to be here um, on a forum on what has got to be the most important issue that New Zealanders face, and that is families and the future of our families. It's good to be here as Prime Minister. It's great to be here as the Minister of Tourism. It's great to be here as the MP for Helensville. And just for the record, we're very happy to have H in our name out there. So, no drama on that one. Look, I do want to talk about a range of different issues. Um, as I said, you've, there's arguably nothing more important than families. For me, uh, my family is the most important thing that I have. Um, I've been married for 25 years this year. Uh, I don't know how my wife is so <laughs> Probably, I've probably only been home for eight of them, but anyway, uh, it's been a very busy time. But uh, look, it's for me, you know, it's a, it's a crucially important thing and um, uh, I take a lot of pride in our children and a lot of pride in the fact that uh, we're doing the best that we can to raise them as fine young New Zealanders and uh, I think you represent a section of New Zealand that cares passionately about the future of New Zealand and everything is ultimately going to be based on that. Uh, it's not going to be based on the decisions we make today uh, or some of the things that we do today, it's going to be based on what New Zealand looks like how those young people take up the reins and the opportunities that they have. And I largely uh, want to talk about that, but I, I do want to start, um, uh, if you like, straight in the lion's den and talk about Section 59, because uh, I think it's important that I do. Um, I don't want to spend an awful lot of time talking about the wording of it, um, and I'll tell you one of the reasons for that. That is that I think on a day-to-day -day basis it is important to New Zealanders, but I don't think the details of the sub-clauses of that legislation about child discipline is the biggest issue for New Zealand parents. Yes, most parents want the reassurance that they can lightly smack their children from time to time, and yes, many do. Uh, what parents don't want, and what I don't want, is government agencies hitting a red alarm and moving to prosecute good parents if they lightly smack their children. I actually don't think that's happening at the moment, and that's one of the reasons why I don't think an overhaul of the law is warranted at this time. But to be absolutely sure, I've appointed a review panel, including Nigel Latter. You'll be aware that Nigel voted no in the referendum and was quite strong in his opinions there. I see him very much as an advocate for parents, and I want to make sure that Nigel is very much part of the process to ensure that police and child, youth and family have procedures in place that ensure good parents aren't criminalised for lightly smacking their children. So, look, I, I acknowledge that um, yeah, I have a difference of view, and uh, I know that some of you will be disappointed in the actions that I've taken, um, but I think I've got to be upfront with you and say that, look, at this point, uh, I think that is the appropriate course of action. I would only say one other thing, and that is that um, I acknowledge that some people feel vulnerable about the system. Uh, you know, I think Bob and I have had a number of discussions, and it's not, it's not necessarily just the police. Um, they, are, they feel concerned that somehow that they'll uh, run foul of the law, that child, youth and family will take their, uh, their kids off them, and I, I acknowledge that fear factor that they have, and that's the whole purpose of making sure that Nigel Latter's in there looking very closely at what the police procedures are, what child, youth and families procedures are, and making sure that um, he himself is comfortable that um, parents won't be prosecuted uh, or lose their children for likely smacking a child. I, do, I also think it's worth putting a bit of perspective in it. Um, in the last 12 months, there have been 33 complaints about smacking and one withdrawn prosecution. At the same time, there were 83,000 complaints uh, about domestic or family violence. So I think it's important to understand the, the effect of, of what's happening. And I think if the law was to change or we were to make sure the law was administered the way that we want it to be, in substance, actually not a lot would change. Uh, I think it's just an issue of, of whether it's in the law or whether it's not. Um, so that's the, the position that we've taken. And um, you know, say so I acknowledge that I've got a difference of, of opinion, but that's, that's where we've come down on the matter at this time. I want to go on to um, the big issues that I think families actually really face. And first and foremost, it's economic. And ultimately, families feel very vulnerable if they can't pay their bills, if their kids don't have an opportunity to have a job, uh, if they're robbed of the opportunity to provide for themselves. 
And I think it's building that culture where people see opportunity. And there's a lot of different things that we've got to do there from an economic point of view. Um, yes, we're facing quite a challenging time at the moment, but I'll tell you something that's quite interesting. Last week, uh, the Reserve Bank Governor left interest rates on hold. Buried in amongst, actually, all of the things he was talking about was his predictions for what the second quarter growth is going to be like in New Zealand, which gets released next week. Now, you may remember if you go back at the start of the year, most people thought every quarter of this year would be negative and quite substantially negative. Well, his prediction for next week's um, Q2 growth figure is minus 0.1%. In other words, basically flat. And the Treasury prediction now is positive for the second quarter. All of them, Treasury, the Reserve Bank, and every other economic commentator these days think the third quarter, the one we're in now, is growing. <coughs> and they think the fourth quarter will grow quite strongly. Interestingly enough, also, I remember at the start of the year, um, I was going over to caucus one morning where you get the regular stop on a Tuesday morning for the press, and they asked me what did I think about the fact that there was a latest report coming out saying that unemployment would be 10 to 11 per cent. And I said, it's rubbish. Um, and I think I'll be proved to be right. Last week, again, in amongst all of that data, the Reserve Bank has actually reduced the peak that they think unemployment will reach now to 6.8%. So is that good? Well, it's not as good as when it was 3.4%, but we're in the worst economic recession since 1930s. I think that's pretty good. Uh, so we, I think there's a lot of reason to be confident. One of the reasons why that's happening is our trading partners are growing at a much faster rate than we thought they would, primarily out of Asia. Huge growth. <coughs> Excuse me, a place like China, they're going absolutely gangbusters. We thought at the start of the year that they would grow at about 5%. When I went over to China in April, they thought they'd grow at 6.5%. They're now growing at at least 8 and maybe 10%. So just huge opportunities for the New Zealand economy and Asia in general. Um, and so I think what we've got to do around the economy is make sure that we give um, families and young people in our overall economy every chance to succeed. And young people are really important as part of that. Because when you look at the numbers, disproportionately young people face high levels of unemployment, particularly Māori and Pacific youth unemployment. Right across the board, they face quite big numbers. <coughs> so to put it in perspective, the unemployment rate at the moment is roughly 6%, but for young people, it's well over double that number. And for Māori and Pacific, it's even bigger numbers. So we've done a number of things. One thing that I'm quite proud of is that we've announced a scheme called Job Ops. And what we're literally doing is paying employers $5,000 if they'll take on a young person aged between 18 and 24. Um, when you think about it, they, they, can, they only have to employ them for six months. Uh, if they employ them off the minimum wage, then basically, well, by the time you take the cost of their wages and the tax deductibility they get, it costs the employer about $9,000, and they get 5000 of that back. And we're just seeing thousands of people um, hitting the website and well over a 1,000 youngsters have been employed in the three weeks or so since we've employed and introduced the scheme. And there's a lot of other things that we're doing in that space. So economically, um, our big challenge is how do we make sure we've, we've, got, we've got the economy we deserve? Because what I often say to people is New Zealand understands how to spend like a first world country. The question is, does it understand how to earn like a first world country? There's a big difference. And um, you know, it's, it, I think if you look at New Zealand, where's it going to succeed? The answer is where it has a competitive advantage and some very easy to identify areas. So food production is one of those. You know, the world is getting wealthier, uh, particularly Asia. Um, we have high quality food. Um, we produce a lot of food. We're very good at it. So huge opportunities around that area. Tourism, I think, is another one. One in 10 people, that's one of the reasons I took tourism. One in 10 people are now employed in tourism. It's 10% of our overall economy, 20% of our exports. Now you think about export education, we earn about $2 billion from export education. Australia earns $15 billion. I mean, do any of us really think that we've maximised our opportunities in that space? I don't think so at all. So we're really sitting there saying there's a number of things economically we're trying to do to support families and keep them in jobs. And that is firstly make sure that we've underpinned the economy with good foundations, a good tax system that works, an infrastructure that works, the right incentives in the economy to make people work, take the bureaucracy and red tape away from people, give them the right incentives to invest, do all of those things. Take some of the regulation and red tape out. 
Then the second part of it is actually making sure that we really are focused on those areas where we can build our export sectors and build our trade opportunities. And we have a lot more to say.